Your role has been changed, has changed trainers from CTO to CEO. So what is the most significant change in your role and what concerns you the most? Well, yeah, about in the beginning of the year, I became CEO. Um, so then I have to run the whole company. And then last year, we raised some money on a, on a note. So that was a lot of work to do. And we've been working on bringing our products to market and rewriting some of our software to make it more efficient and clean. So I'd say it just got much more diverse. Mm -hmm. And then we also built out a bigger sales team with David and customer support, and then started building a proper operations and supply chain team. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot of work. We, it's, it's very different from the core engineering focus of you know, build the, the best product and work on hardware software. We had to expand our, our scope. But are you still involving in designing work or to market teching or, or? Yes. Oh. The software, there's operating system group, a compiler group, a low level bare metal software team that worked for me directly. Um, and then on the hardware side, the SOC team, uh, CPU design team, AI IP team worked for me. And I talk to them all the time about technical stuff. I don't do design at the moment, but I have lots of meetings with them about what we're doing, why we're doing it. I do lots of design review, I'd say. Well, Korean readers and Korean people are not really aware of TenseTorrent, so could you please uh, explain your journey as a chip architect and how you came to be known as a living legend of chip, <laughs> chip design? <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure how that part happened. <laughs> So I started my career, well, my second job was at Digital Equipment. I was there for mm -hmm. 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I worked, I learned to be a computer architect on the Bax 8800 in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then I worked in the Alpha design team. And I was co-architect of the second and third Alpha chips, mm -hmm. which at the time were the world's fastest processors. They were in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know how that happened, really. And then I went to AMD where I was the architect of K8, mm -hmm. and I also c contributed to the K7 design, and then the x86-64 spec in hypertransport. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I found out I had fans on a non-tech. Mm -hmm. There was a forum mm -hmm. which had very long discussions about my CPU designs and architectural mm -hmm. decisions. And then I worked on four generations of Apple products and one MacBook Air. And I think they were also great products. And people really liked that. And then I went to AMD, and I was, uh, ran the Zen project. And I was one of the principal architects, but also I built the, the team and organization and methodology for Zen, which is very famous in the PC world. And then at Tesla, I was the first employee in the autopilot hardware group. And we built a hardware three chip, which drove a car in 18 months which was a, uh, I'd say, world record for going from one person to driving a car. That was pretty big. And then at Intel, I was SVP, and I had a team of 10,000 people, which is super fun. I read it on, on another interviewing article. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so somewhere along the way, people noticed that, I guess. One thing you recently mentioned was that you kind of pro, uh, provoked Sam Altman's to it, then you can make it cheaper. You can do it cheaper. So, <laughs> so first of all, I don't believe, like the news read, ran articles saying he wanted to raise seven trillion dollars. Yeah. Well, so we do two things. We build an AI processor, which uses RISC-V processors inside of it to feed the instructions to the Tensor engine, mm. right? And those processors are more about how they work than whether they're better or more efficient. So the tensor processor is special, but the uh, RISC-V engines in there, we used them because we could build them the way we wanted to. Mm. RISC-V as a computer architecture is a specification, mm. right? It's an open source specification. So ARM is owned by ARM, mm. and Intel architecture is owned by Intel and AMD. But RISC-V is something anybody can do anything with. So the reason I like it is I'm a computer architect. Mm -hmm. I can build a new processor that's different and I think better than anybody else, mm -hmm. which we intend to do. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much because it's RISC-V, mm -hmm. it's because it's open source, okay. and we can do what we want. That's mm -hmm. the key. The more people that work on something, the more chance there is for innovation. 
the architecture is great. Obviously, at Tenstorm, we've got a team with a history of delivering high-performance compute. But the fact that they can own something and they can customize it the way they want for their workloads, it's really important to them. And how did you establish the relationship with Korean company? So I've been working with Samsung since, I think, 95. I did a project with them on a digital for Alpha. Four phone chips at mm -hmm. Apple, mm -hmm. uh, autonomous driving chip at Tesla, mm -hmm. and several chips with them at Intel. Mm -hmm. And they were all successful. Okay. So we get along pretty good, apparently. Mm. And there's lots of really great people there. Okay. Because, oh, speaking of the system, also, I, um, well, actually, so Samsung is developing its own application processor, Exynos, but it's not really popular. So Exynos is not really popular. Like, again, attention or popul uh, popularity. Uh, so, so actually, Korean readers or Korean, there is a kind of atmosphere that Exynos is failure of Samsung. So can you give them a kind of advice to improve the AP? I'd have to go through. Like oh, okay. te building this technology is really hard. Oh, okay. And you have, there's lots of pieces that go together to make the product. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the business proposition. And then sometimes you don't win the business for reasons besides the, the technology. So you, know, you mentioned, I think Jim talked about a, a very long history with, with uh, Samsung. I think we're also really impressed. You know, I've seen the uh, Korean company's adoption of new technology, AI, and stuff like RISC-V High Performance. It's been incredible. Mm -hmm. So what's really impressed me is that you know, we've had, you know, when we made some announcements about what we were doing, we had, we had good relationships with a lot of Korean companies, but they were very proactive in adopting the technology. Some of the fastest companies in the world in terms of the adoption, which is awesome. So that's something I think that's also helped us gain traction here because you know, we're doing AI, we're doing Risk V. These are in the news a lot. You see what's happening in NVIDIA, you see what's happening, you know, with Risk V. So I think the adoption and their willingness to try new technology has been pretty impressive as well. Okay. Uh, may I ask when did, when you uh, when did you start your um, business the relationship with Hyundai? Yeah, it was over a year ago. Oh. Some people I knew in Korea introduced us. Oh, I see. And then they wanted to make an investment. And they're building all kinds of technology. I, I didn't know. They build automotive components, Boston Dynamics, mm -hmm. obviously great cars. Mm -hmm. I went, I got a factory tour this morning. How was it? Good, mostly good. Mm -hmm. I saw some room for improvements, but mm -hmm. they make very good cars. Do you, do you think they can, Hyundai can be a next Tesla? I think they're gonna be Better than him? a great car company. I don't know if anybody's going to be a next Tesla. Why would you be a next Tesla? Okay, the they person. should be themselves. Oh, and I think they're very good okay. at that. They make a lot of different Life products. Yes. <laughs> don't copy somebody. Then you're a follower. I don't think they're followers. I think they're. Oh, you don't think they are followers? Leaders. Oh, that's interesting. Look at their cars. Mm. They're pretty good. You know, one more company, so LG as well. well LG was actually Tenstorn's first publicly announced IP customer. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you know, I think we've had a lot of success in Korea with LG, Hyundai, Samsung, mm -hmm. and we work really closely with uh, many software companies here as well. So yeah, it's a good market for us. Could you explain the importance of software in the auto automotive industry in recent era? Yeah, so there's a big movement. They, they say the software-defined vehicle. Because it, it, it used to be about a car and mm -hmm. it didn't have software, right? And then it had a little bit of software on a little screen for your GPS or maybe your temperature control. But now modern cars, they have an infotainment system. They have a GPS system. They have uh, maybe ADAS. They have wireless radios, software updates, and some features. Like a Tesla, we put a fast computer and infotainment system so you could play games, mm -hmm. apparently, while you're driving. So all those software components you know, need compute. And then the, the devices in the car, like your brakes and your steering, are getting smarter. So then all that software has to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So then the car itself has a really fast network in it, mm -hmm. where all the different software components talk to each other. And then when you write lots of software, you need a really good development environment. Mm -hmm. You don't just build software on the car anymore. You build software in a data center, mm -hmm. test it, build it, and then deploy it to the car. So that's a really big change for a car company because they didn't used to have any programmers. Mm -hmm. And now they have a lot. You have had multiple options in Foundry, so why did you choose Samsung? Door powering on a chip pretty soon. Mm -hmm. That's based on TSMC. Mm -hmm. And then when we were looking for a partner for our next chip, 
We wanted to go, what's that? Quasar. Yeah, so we wanted to build it with multiple chips and chiplets. And there's a lot of design work around the chiplets, the package, the DiFi, the IP. And when we talk to Samsung, they have a really good team for, like in-house at Samsung, to bring a lot of that technology together. Like the reason I chose Samsung for the Tesla part is they were a really full service place. They did oh, packaging yeah. design, some of the physical design back end. Mm -hmm. They provided some of the IP, some from Exynos. Mm -hmm. and, the, and that whole package is really strong. I just read um, the, uh, your LinkedIn post that you have a kind of relationship with Rapidus in Japan too. So yeah. in what role they are, uh, are they different? So in Japan, we have a number of customers for our AI, AI and CPU technology, and they introduced us to Rapidus. Mm -hmm. And then the, gov the Japanese government has a very aggressive plan to invest in both the foundry technology, chip design, and big systems. Japan often has led the world in HPC computing. So we ended got talking about what their plan was, and I really like it. Mm. And then some of our customers are going to use that technology. Oh, so we're going to work together to do that. I want to ask you, how can Samsung drive or survive in this era of some uh, chip wars? I don't know. They're a pretty big foundry. They really? lead the world in, in DRAMs, mm -hmm. which is really good. Mm -hmm. They have really good process. Mm -hmm. They're in a lot of products. People like to turn everything into a horse race. Mm -hmm. Samsung's been around for a long time. They have really good technology and really good engineers. Mm -hmm. I like working with them because they have a good relationship. And they deliver and they work well with us. So I think that's one of the keys for business long run, is good mm -hmm. relationships and you know work together and make a partnership to make a product. Right. So the South Korea hardware industry is pretty, pretty much uh, flourished. Am I right? Um, but the country is just started, is just beginning to nurture the software industry. To so, could you do you have any advice for the government officials or companies to fostering this industry, like in software industry? Well, support startups. A per startup, okay. So there's a lot of you know, if you want a big software company, you have to start with lots of small ones, mm -hmm. right? Um, we like to hire interns. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to work on hiring some interns in, in Korea next year. Mm -hmm. and, and the cool thing about that is the students come and learn. They also do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Students are really fast to, to get up to speed. But then that affects, like, what do they go back to school to learn? Mm -hmm. And it also, some people say, I fi figured out by being an intern what I really want to study. So it affects their course of study. Mm -hmm. um, but the AI wave has given lots of students a reason to go into software. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's happening here.